मंच पे बैठे हुए हमारे माननीय आदरणीय श्रद्धेय पद्मश्री कुलपति प्रोफेसर नवांग श्यामतेन जी और संस्कृत मंत्रालय से संस्कृत मंत्रालय भारत सरकार से आए हुए संयुक्त सचिव श्री पद्मलोचन शाहू जी इस सभागार में बैठे हुए आचार्य वृंद कर्मचारीगण और छात्र मेरे प्रिय छात्र छात्राओं आज हम लोगों का एक शुभ अवसर है हमारे बीच संयुक्त सचिव श्री पद्मलोचन जी उपस्थित हैं मैं अपने माननीय कुलपति से निवेदन करूंगा कि इस अवसर पे अपने उद्बोधन से हमको अनुग्रहित करें माननीय कुलपति प्रोफेसर नवांग श्यामतेन जी रिवियर्ड श्री पद्मलोचन साहू जी दी जॉइंट सेक्रेटरी ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर और रजिस्ट्रार डॉक्टर उपाध्याय जी एंड और फैकल्टी मेंबर्स और स्टाफ मेंबर्स एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज अ रियली गुड ओकेजन very pleasant occasion that we have uh, among us uh, shri padmalojan ji and uh, now here this hall has been decorated uh, because of this uh, culture programs uh, last night and also uh, uh, this evening they are going to have the celebration so it is in a very festival mood i think so we can have maintain this festival mood uh, so i thought that uh, instead of speaking for a long time i should take uh, uh, shri sahu ji to our campus and then explain the things then the explanation of those things uh, will explain lots of things it will take uh, save a lots of time if i speak here and introduce keep introducing all of these things that will take time and also that will become a very abstract kind of you know think so in order to have a more kind of more lively uh, introduction then i, I wanted to, uh, him to visit our places and then this morning since 9 915 actually it was scheduled 930 but uh, he uh, we started the uh, touring by 915 and then visited to various places so as we have gone through the tibetan culture because this was established in 1967 and formally inaugurated on, on 1st January 1958 uh, by his holiness the dalai lama when it was in the within the campus of uh, sanskrit university under the sanskrit university so this was established uh, for the purpose of uh, you know preserving the tibetan culture which actually was uh, uh, is a kind of uh, you know uh, the 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 um, living culture that originated uh, from india particularly in from those uh, great monastic universities nalanda otantapuri takshishila vikramshila and those places buddhism went to different places in different asian countries and also china but uh, the way the buddhism and indian knowledge system went to tibet had been completely different in terms of the intensity in terms of the height in, ten, in terms of the you know diverse nature of the disciplines that went to tibet which incorporated the intellectual studies which incorporated the you know culture aspect which incorporated the spiritual aspect to such a depth and height that it is not comparable in any case in any manner with others right so therefore as we have seen that the buddha's teachings uh, translated into tibetan indian masters uh, teachings translated in, into tibetan language uh, uh, goes into thousands uh, near about 5000 uh, you know treatises and uh, in addition to that uh, the quality and the you know the quality of the translations uh, are still not comparable with any kind of tr- translations which are taking place uh, at this moment uh, in this highly you know uh, developed uh, uh, technology it is still not comparable with uh, you know the the translations done in those times in tibet and in addition to that uh, there are many several lakhs of uh, treatises uh, 
penned, authored by Tibetan scholars in different uh, uh, disciplines. Normally, people used to say that Buddhism went from Buddhism went to uh, Tibet from India, but uh, I, you know, often used to emphasize that not only Buddhism but many other varieties of Indian knowledge system went to Tibet, right? Many other. In a way, we can say that uh, all the knowledge systems that prevailed in those great monastic universities, uh, like uh, you know, medicine, astronomy, Vyakarana, Kavyas, Chandas, and uh, so many of those uh, disciplines uh, prevalent uh, during those times uh, in those great monastic universities who went to Tibet. And in a way, we can say in nutshell that uh, the entire cultural and intellectual system of uh, Nalanda and Vikramashila got transplanted in Tibet. Rather than, you know, choosing some of the selected texts, the entire edifice of the culture and intellectual system got, to, you know, was transplanted in Tibet. So then, eventually, as we know that, you know, the Chi after Chinese invasion, then it was a strategically planned kind of uh, uh, the uh, method to eradicate the entire identity of Tibet. And then it was said by Chairman Mao Zedong that uh, religion is a poison and it must be eradicated and it must be, you know, taken away from the mind of people and life of people. And that was uh, actually the motto of uh, communism. And uh, I used to say that uh, now, if in this 21st century, now which is obsolete kind of system, communism or Buddhism, particularly the uh, Tibetan Buddhist, uh, you know, uh, culture and philosophical and spiritual system and intellectual system that we have, which one is obsolete? It is being preferred and, uh, you know, taking a lot of in interest by Western scientists, intellectuals, and many around the world. And where is communism at the moment? It is disappearing, evaporating now. So anyway, this is the situation. And uh, after the Chinese invasion and the His Holiness came to it, India, and then after, with the help of Indian government and people, we got our culture reestablished in India in such a manner that uh, it uh, got, uh, you know, uh, developed uh, at a very wide kind of uh, spread. And also it went to uh, the Western countries. And in a way, it become a, became a kind of a universal and global phenomena now that Tibetan Buddhism is regarded as uh, uh, one of the most influential, uh, not only religion, but also intellectual entity and a scientific entity. So therefore, with that kind of uh, background, this institute was established. At that time, we didn't have any monastery in India, except a camp for the monks who used to study uh, in Tibet and who came to India, and who, uh, you know, uh, who needed uh, opportunities to study. They were, you know, collected and uh, uh, given opportunity in a camp, and then they were given facilities for, uh, for study. Those students uh, in which we have many Indian uh, students who earlier from, from uh, you know, all the Indian Himalayan region people used to go to Tibet, and then from Bhutan, from Nepal, from B Mongolia, from Kazakhstan, and those places from Russia used to go to Tibet, and from Japan also occasionally used to go to Tibet for further studies. And when, after 1959, when 98% of the monasteries and in, uh, temples were destroyed and the monks were disrobed and killed and imprisoned, there was no scope for uh, such a, you know, practice in Tibet. So therefore, when this got established in India, so many of this was initially established uh, to provide opportunity for those uh, students who came from Tibet and wanted to continue their education uh, in India. So in here, to, pro to provide an opportunity for the traditional students and uh, give uh, traditional courses and uh, within the framework of uh, Indian modern, uh, mon yeah, modern university system, we have this uh, pre-university course and then bachelor, master, PhD and things like that. So at the moment we have a, a mainstream of a Buddhist philosophy, met metaphysics, epistemology and logic stream. And then uh, apart from that we have a Tibetan language and literature, we have Tibetan history, in, master in Tibetan history, 
and then we have uh, fine arts uh, from uh, from pre uh, pre university bachelor and master uh, and we will have uh, um, the uh, phd as well and then we have uh, in uh, the astronomy astrology and then we have in the the courses in uh, tibetan traditional medicine and we have uh, uh, the uh, the teacher education uh, system uh, in which we have a very substantial component of uh, um, the uh, Tibetan uh, Buddhist philosophy and uh, the ethics and, uh, and Tibetan literature and things like that. So, so far as uh, the Buddhist, uh, the teacher education department is concerned, so earlier it was uh, being funded by, it was funded by Dharamsala and now it is going to be discontinued from 2019. So we sought HRD and HRD has given a fund to run the course. So it will be going uh, f further going on on regular basis. And uh, the courses that we have designed is very unique that uh, for BA, BA and BA, BSc, we have in incorporated not only Buddhist and Tibetan components, but also we have in incorporated uh, uh, the made the courses very substantial. That uh, NCT has uh, regarded that as a sample course for the, uh, for every university around uh, across the country, and they have uh, taken that as a sample kind of course. And it is being suggested to the universities that uh, the courses may be made according to our you know course. And uh, recently, we applied for M Ed course, and M Ed course is. Uh, at the general and med course, and then in as a supplement, we uh, you know gave a, a suggested uh, and proposed uh, uh, Buddhist ethics, Buddhist uh, psychology, and Buddhist uh, uh, kind of intelligent uh, emotional intelligence and ethics. And when they uh, you know our presenters uh, went to the NCT experts, then they suggested that you have a unique uh, course of your own. Why don't you make this as a you know, ma major component of the MET uh, course? Because that would be a very unique kind of course that can be very useful and uh, this will be uh, some, something very special. So then uh, for the last uh, two, three weeks, we have been working on this and uh, finally this was done and I think it was sent last yesterday or day before yesterday to NCT. And uh, so the because in that we have incorporated uh, emotional intelligence and uh, you know literacy of emotions and uh, social emotional learnings and then we have uh, the loric of uh, the cognitive kind of you know the systems and then we have uh, some component of uh, the uh, tagric uh, that is the logic or syllogism so these uh, constitute a very uh, kind of rich uh, uh, component uh, which uh, NCT liked very much and uh, I hope that th this will be a kind of special uh, course. So besides these things uh, you have already visited this morning our research department in which we have re restoration, and translation, dictionary and rare Buddhist text uh, manuscript uh, research department uh, in which uh, we have been doing, I won't go into the details because we have already discussed this matter and you have seen those things. So these are the things that we are trying to, we have, uh, you know, many, I used to um, treat it uh, from, you know, look at it from three angles. The most challenging things are three at the moment in our academic education system or academic or education system in general in the higher education system particularly, that we need to have our courses you know, comparable to the international level. That is one thing. And then we also need to have uh, the pedagogical systems and the resource person needs to be qualified to the extent that they can, you know, deliberate the courses in the best manner. And then, of course, we can give information, we can give, teach our students, but uh, we need to make them, uh, you know, good persons. If they don't become a good person, that is what we are seeing at the moment in the modern education system. We, are, we give them information, they are good informants, but they, it is, there is a lack of uh, you know, uh, spirituality or in a way we can say the values, lack of, due to lack of values, we face lots of problems at the moment in, at the global level. 
So therefore, to make uh, uh, the students uh, a good human being and then make them develop it in a holistic manner, that is the main objective. And then in addition to that, I always tell um, my colleagues, uh, researchers and our um, the faculty members that the disciplines must be, you know, the frontiers of the disciplines must be pushed ahead by our scholars. Because this is, the universities are the places from where people expect, the civilization expect the frontiers to be moving ahead. If we just get stagnated over there, then it won't move ahead. The civilization and the de intellectual development won't, won't take place. So therefore, it is very important for us to take care of uh, pushing the frontiers of knowledge system ahead so that we can make a special kind of you know, contribution to the knowledge system and humanity in general. So I won't take much time, but uh, I would like to um, thank uh, um, uh, Shri Sahuji for coming here. And because for the last year, uh, since 2016 May, we have been facing some uh, problems with the stagnation in the ministry, uh, that uh, our promotions got stagnated, uh, our grants got stagnated. You, ca you can see that we have been celebrating the Golden Jubilee at a grand level, but uh, most, of, most of you don't know that. We have been celebrating those, you know, uh, the, the, the functions and the conferences and those things on our own expenses. We didn't get to fund. We asked the ministry to get, give us fund, but uh, for all these grant, so many events, we just got 65 lakhs only. 65 lakh is sufficient only for one event. Just the vice, chan vice chancellor's conference is even more than that. And what about the, you know, the 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 the, um, the golden jubilee celebration and the international conferences and so on, conferences and things like that. So we had a kind of. A, deficiency about uh, six, seven crores, which we met uh, through our own fund, uh, donation fund, and now we requested, and uh, finally we are very happy to inform you all that we, this has been approved. So, and uh, right after when Sahuji uh, took up his uh, responsibility, then the, you know, the train got on its track and started moving ahead. So for this, I really appreciate uh, uh, Sri Sahuji uh, for his effort and for his support because he understands the, uh, the necessity and importance of this kind of you know, knowledge system and institute which can contribute not only to uh, a particular kind of community, Buddhist community. Yes, we are not working for Buddhist community. We are working for general knowledge system that can benefit the entire humanity as such. So we, we, because now these days, as I said earlier, Buddhist epistemology, Buddhist, you know, the, the psychology and Buddhist emotional systems are regarded as something very advanced scientific entities with which very, you know, the top scientists are engaged in doing research. So therefore, we are already in association with those top scientists who are making advancement in human knowledge system so therefore, this institute has uh, lots of things to contribute and that has uh, lots of, you know, a high potential to contribute to humanity and enhance the human knowledge system in general. So I hope and uh, I'm very happy that uh, Shri Sahuji has already taken up steps uh, to help and to, you know, pace the way for develop further development and again in further in future also, I, I hope that uh, with your guidance and with your assistance, we can move, we can not only move further, but we will, we can run further, right? In one ex example is like, uh, actually the Sawarikba building uh, case should have been, you know, started and uh, must have been under construction at the moment, but it got stagnated for the whole year. And then when he arrived, he took up the, uh, you know, case and then uh, the, it has uh, started moving now, and which is uh, great, and uh, uh, we must uh, thank uh, uh, Sri Sahuji, please. We must uh, thank. <laughs> so, so with these words, um, uh, I welcome uh, Sri Sahuji, 
And uh, before that, uh, I would like to um, request uh, three representatives, one representing, uh, representing our administration, one representing our, uh, the, the faculty, and one representing our student to offer khatak to Shri Sahuji. Representing our administration, Registrar, representing the faculty, teaching faculty, <laughs> Professor Wang Shuk Dorji, representing student community, the president of the student association, and finally, uh, I will felicitate him. Now I would like to request uh, Shri Sahoji to address, please. Uh, wherever you want. You can sit here or you can go anywhere. Esteemed uh, Professor Samton, uh, thank you very much for inviting me here uh, and thank you very much for your generous words, which I don't know if I deserve them, but thank you so much. And appreciate and thank you all for being, uh, having braved the rain and coming uh, this morning to uh, this talk uh, and the welcome uh, that Professor Samten has arranged for me. I missed my early morning uh, walk today <laughs> and Professor uh, ensured that I do walk around the campus uh, and make up for that. Thank you. I made many attempts in the past to come to Banaras. I heard so much about this city, the ancient city of Banaras, but I never made it. Once I came and I had to go back from the airport. Last time I wanted to come to Sarnath because I was looking after the charge of uh, ASI, Archaeological Survey of India. And uh, I was to come and then uh, I think the parliamentary committee meeting happened so I had to miss that. So finally, when I got an opportunity to look after the, from the ministry, the institutions of uh, the universities, we have four of them, all of you know about it, the Buddhist institutions, and, uh, and there how I got an opportunity to be here. Thank you again, Professor Samten, for such a generous welcome here. Uh, friends, uh, colleagues, the teachers fraternity and the students of uh, CIHTS. Uh, over the years I know from 67, then 76, then 88, I think 2009, it became uh, a deemed university. It has got a status of uh, central university. Uh, the institution is growing and growing leaps and bounds. And I can see uh, the happiness factor here, people smiling and uh, welcoming everybody. So I'm very happy that uh, in a small way, we in the ministry trying to work and see this institution grow from a basic elementary level to a central university and would like to see this university, uh, as Professor said, uh, move on to the international level. We all know the institutions uh, themselves don't make great without the institution having a very good faculty and very good, very competitive students. The technology will take you somewhere, but these institutions with this infrastructure can only be great if the faculty and the teacher cohabit and live happily 
and together with uh, all share and care. And that is the motto which I could understand from Professor Samton who has been trying to build that cohesiveness among you. And uh, that gives me great pride uh, in uh, uh, saying that uh, this is one of the best institutions. Uh, I am also a vice chancellor of another institution currently, the Nalanda uh, Nava Nalanda Mahavihara. I haven't been there, but I wish to go there and speak to the students. But uh, my horizon about Buddhist studies is growing with my interactions with people like you, with Professor, and with various others. I've been to another institutions uh, in uh, Leh, Ladakh. So slowly I'm also getting used to uh, the curriculum, the lifestyle, the kind of uh, ambience, environment that you create and your contributions to the society. I do get to know about it and I'm happy I would like to be part of it, be a student of it and understand and contribute myself uh, to whatever possible way uh, that I would like to. I'm just two months old. I just took over from my colleague uh, a few months ago, uh, just two and a half months rather. And uh, when I looked at it, I, I, I did try to do some uh, analysis. We, I haven't done any academic analysis about any institution, but surely about how the ministry is uh, funding, how the reports are being generated, how the responses are made by the universities, and uh, what all you people are doing uh, in terms of course curriculum, etc. I'm trying to do uh, some reading and uh, I've done some analysis. I've sent and uh, sent those analysis to all the institutions and uh, also the cultural centers that we have in the ministry. And I hope to get to know from you uh, about uh, what unique way you can create uh, or uh, benchmark your uh, uh, uniqueness uh, so that uh, other universities uh, can replicate them. If you have the best practices here, other universities would like to replicate them rather than uh, you know, uh, inventing them on themselves. They don't have to reinvent it. They have to just replicate it. And that would be really a great contribution to, uh, to the institution as a whole and uh, to this institution particularly in uh, providing leadership. <coughs> I, uh, you know, when I was growing up, I also like a student, uh, like all of you, I get to know that most of you, you are all uh, the residential students. I also studied in a residential school. My parents uh, uh, thought uh, I'm too, uh, you know, wild and uh, to tame me in the at home, so they sent me off to a residential school, <laughs> and and I can tell you from my experience, uh, there are pros and cons. There are good and bad of uh, a residential school, but it teaches you the self learning, the learn by itself uh, to make you self reliant, and uh, that has helped me in a great way in my life and career. You know, I haven't uh, if I have understood something to do something. Uh, nothing deters me from doing that. No matter who is, uh, how many obstacles come be before me, I, I think about it, I achieve it. And I'm sure, uh, you know, that is something very, very elementary in the residential system of studies uh, that we, we also, the con side is that uh, the students are left to themselves. So it is you who has to decide what you want to be in future, how you want to shape your life. And uh, as someone said, uh, you know, the education is like a pizza base and the toppings are the skill sets. So you want to develop your skill sets, you have to be those toppings. Then only it looks good and you, you, know, you, you know, you have a good bite. That is how it is. So I'm sure as students here, all of you, uh, would like to uh, look for those toppings and create those pizzas for the society, for the well-being of the society and your contributions to society. I was very happy to see um, uh, 
how this institution has go, grown over the years. Uh, the, I went all over. I saw the library. I, I was very impressed with the digital section, uh, which is digitizing the manuscripts. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was surprised. Ministry has a manuscript mission. But I found the real mission is here. It's doing great work. And I, I want to say that... Uh, the ministry should send its team to get uh, trained here uh, doing this work. I think most of uh, us do not know what actually lies here unless we move out and see what these institutions are doing. Similarly, when I went to Lay, I found they are doing a uh, lot of other works uh, like the Tanka paintings. Uh, they have, uh, you know, the sculpture section, they have the painting section. And they're doing really very commendable job in preserving uh, the traditions, uh, or the Buddhist traditions or the Tibetan traditions, uh, whatever you call it. Friends, uh, uh, I'm an administrator. I'm not an academician. I'm not going into the integrities of uh, how an institution should be. And uh, uh, at this moment, uh, although I, we do interact with the vice chancellors of the universities and try to know uh, what is your requirement and how we can help you out in uh, doing that. But uh, uh, one of few thoughts uh, that comes to my mind uh, while here is that uh, the ancient Indian traditions, professor spoke about uh, the good old uh, traditions and how Buddhist studies or Buddhism moved from here to Tibet and various parts of the world and then now it is slowly coming back and uh, and we are part of that uh, system uh, i consider my, myself a drop in that whole system to you know contribute to that system uh, we at the moment when we talk about our education system in india i look at it differently what kind of children are are we producing in terms of uh, you know, wisdom, knowledge. I see we are trying, we have forgotten our culture, our traditions. We are primarily producing clones uh, who try to uh, replicate the Western systems here. The technology of Western you can use, but don't forget the traditions. That is what I want to tell you. We have great writers, we have great literature, we had great astrophysicists, we have the best philosophy, the greatest philosophy, Buddhist philosophy. But we are looking west, we are studying the west philosophy, we are trying to ebb the west, we have forgotten our past. And our system need to re-engineer itself and incorporate the values, the old traditions and systems. Till medieval period, everything was okay. And with the invasions of uh, the Mughals and uh, you know the British uh, and the colonizations destroyed everything. And we lost our most valuable culture. Today, being in the culture ministry, I would like to tell you that our job is to not only propagate, develop, and uh, preserve and conserve culture, we also see, must see that it is developing everywhere, all parts and nook and corner of uh, India. And that is exactly what we need to do. And to do that, this is one such example where you know, the institutions can, because the ministry itself cannot do, it needs those islands uh, where it should, you know, move forward and uh, spread to all parts of India. And this is where uh, the institutions have a role, a big role, a greater role to spread uh, the idea of India, the Indianness, which we have lost. We had great scientists, we had great philosophers. 
I do not think we really study about uh, the Buddhist philosophy or the contemporary Indian philosophy. See Aurobindo's philosophy, I mean there are many, we, you can name them. We do not study in the schools about these philosophies, we look west. For everything we are trying to look west, but we have these great traditions. If, I think a month ago I met uh, uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and one beautiful thing he said for a personal growth, your mental, physical and spiritual growth is important. <clears throat> and that is where it germinated in India. And this is one country which he said emphatically has the future. Everybody will look towards India and the government of India need to do something to, you know, keep that up. Very interesting. I mean, the, the thoughts of uh, uh, the great soul, you know, spoke in so many ways. Friends, uh, uh, I would not take uh, much uh, time to end up this uh, talk. I would like to leave some thoughts with you. Uh, just few months ago, I was sharing with my son, my second son who is uh, just 11 years old and he is in class 6. And I asked him, son, uh, who is your favorite teacher? And he very promptly said, Google. <laughs> and uh, you know, I was, I was stunned because uh, Google gives you a lot of information and along with that it comes a lot of garbage. So I said, why so? I, I was referring to your class teacher. Why did you say that? He says, whatever I want to know, information is not provided by teacher. It is provided by Google. I get to know about everything from Google. What I want to retain, I retain. What I want to reject, I reject. So it is my favorite teacher. Why I said this is, personally what I found, the relevance of teachings. You know, there are many ways what we are doing as students teachers or administrators, there is invasion from all sides. Lot of informations today are available through internet, through television, through, through various, you know, social media or various other modes. Our job now is to, you know, use the informations in a way that the good informations remains with the teachers or the, or the students. And it is important for the teachers to think and be relevant today. If the institutions have I won't say very good quality teachers or so, but teachers who can mentor the students, those institutions will remain at the top. And therefore, what we are missing in the society today, at home, at society, at home, at teaching institutions is mentorship. How many students I have mentored and how many of my students have become great teachers for the future. That is so important for us. With this thought I leave you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming, braving the rain and being here. It is a wonderful uh, morning today and I, in, in Delhi it is Janmashtami, so very auspicious day for all of us. And thank you so much for inviting and hearing. Thank you so much. Bye. Adani Kulpaji, Mani Sanjuk Sachuji, 
इस सभागार में बैठे हुए आचार्य बृंद एवं हमारे प्रिय छात्र छात्राएं आज यह बहुत सुखद संजोग है कि बाय नेम पद्म दो पद्म हमारे मंच पर विराजमान हैं एक बाई अवार्ड और एक बाई नेम और मुझे बड़ी सुखद अनुभूत हो रही है कि आप हम लोगों के आमंत्रण पर आप आए अपना समय निकाले और आपने अपने विचारों से हम लोगों को बताया और समझाया और इसके लिए ढेर सारी सब हमारी साधुवाद और बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद माननीय कुलपत जी हमेशा ही हम लोगों को मार्ग निर्देशन का काम करते हैं और उनके नेतृत्व में विश्वविद्यालय उत्तरोत्तर वृद्धि कर रहा है और इस तरह का कार्यक्रम सभी को एक प्रेरणा स्रोत का रूप में काम करता है आपके इस नेतृत्व के लिए हम सभी साधुवाद देते हैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आप इस कार्यक्रम में सभी आए आचार्य वृंद कर्मचारीगण और हमारे जो छात्र छात्राएं हैं हम सभी को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद दे रहे हैं इस अवसर पे पुनः धन्यवाद नमस्कार